All right, everybody, this is our last 112 video. So we're picking up after talking about alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes, and how to name them and how they react. Uh, and we also talked about how aromatic compounds react. So let's dig into a little bit about what aromatic compounds are, how we name them, um, etc. So the basis for all aromatic compounds is this molecule called benzene, right? And so I have a couple different renditions of benzene here for you. We have um, the explicitly drawn structure. So all the carbons are shown here for you. The same thing represented here where we use the line structure instead of showing each carbon individually. And then of course here is where we get super lazy and we just don't even show any of the H's anymore because um, they're kind of implied. The circle represents these three double bonds, which could be where they are shown here, or, or they can, they actually like move around where they could be in between. Oh, that wasn't very good, but <laughs> they're in between the other, the other carbons. But either way, at any given time, each carbon has a double bond on it. So what we do is draw this circle to show that. This is created because the two resonance structures, that is electrons get moved around, but the structure stays the same shape, um, average out to be just this sort of ring of double bond that is distributed throughout all six carbons. So this is what it looks like if you build the model. Um, they don't do addition reactions because these bonds being what we call delocalized, so distributed over the entire molecule of benzene, are not very accessible unlike our other alkenes, which is something, you know, like this, these have double bonds that are really easy to get to. In benzene, that's not the case. Those double bonds are, are very protected by resonance and by kind of just the shape, the double bonds being kind of internal to the ring. Um, so what benzene does is it, is it does that substitution thing we were talking about where one of these hydrogens gets replaced by something else. Halogens, for example, are really good at popping on there and kicking out a hydrogen. Okay, so when we substitute onto a benzene, it creates molecules that need to be named. The formal naming scheme is this methyl benzene style. So basically you have the benzene ring, so that's our parent name, and methyl means I got a, you know, CH3 hanging off of it. So that's very, very similar to what we were doing before with the alkenes, but the ending is benzene instead of, you know, hex or hept or whatever. But for benzenes, for, for our aromatic compounds, it's much more common to use some common names. So like, for example, you can buy toluene in the paint department of any, um, you know, hardware store. Phenol is used a lot in like the A&P lab. So what phenol is, is a substituted benzene where you put in an OH, right? So this benzene with an OH group is always called a phenol. Some places pronounce it a little bit differently. Some people might say phenol, okay? So those mean the same thing. Aniline is a substituted benzene where you've put in a mean group on there, so NH2. Benzaldehyde is benzene as an aldehyde, right? So this structure would be the double bond O with the H hanging off. So that's a that's an aldehyde hanging onto a benzene. Benzoic acid is a carboxylic acid. So again, this is the thing where you have a double bond O with an OH. And then finally, our last one is benzonitrile. So C, this is actually C with a triple bond N, is a nitrile group. So when you stick that on a benzene, we call it a benzonitrile. The most important ones to focus on are sort of the, mo you know, the most common anyway, are these four. But you should try to make flashcards that have like the structure and the name on the other side so that you're familiar with them. Now, the reason we want to be familiar with that is because of course we can substitute more than one hydrogen. All right. So here, for example, we have substituted two bromines onto a benzene ring. So the way to name this, the formal way is the first one here. So right, we would number one of these as the first carbon and the next one will be the second carbon. So it's just gonna be one comma two di because there's two of them, bromobenzene. Over here is different. 
right? So we can name this one number one and that's number two. There's nothing on number two. So this would be one three. And of course this is one four. So that's the official way to name it. The more common way though is to use notation called ortho, meta, that's an M, and para. All right, so ortho position is number two carbon, meta position is the number three carbon, and para is number four. So there's kind of a pattern here. There's like a rhythm to it. If you start with any one of the substituted carbons to be number one, and then you say ortho, meta, para, ortho, meta, para. Okay, so if it occurs at the meta position, we would label it as meta dibromobenzene. So M is meta, right? Um, one four is across from each other. Para means across. So that's what P dibromobenzene looks like. These have utterly different properties. They smell different. They have a different melting point. They're totally, totally different. Okay. So ortho is carbon number two. Meta is carbon number three. And para means carbon number four. All right. So this is the pattern. It, you don't have to go just in the clockwise direction. You could go backwards. So this, this could be carbon one, two, three, four, right? Whichever way is convenient to get the substituents to the smallest number. Um, so both positions right next to your substituent are ortho. Both positions that are one away are meta, and the one across from it is para. So here we go. Or ortho bromo toluene. So first we got to know what a toluene is, right? Do you remember? This is a good place to take a second and try to do the structure and see if you can do it. So toluene is a CH3 hanging off the benzene and O bromo ortho means right next to it. We're going to have a bromine. Okay. Now there's a, there's a hundred ways to draw this. I could have done it like this, right? We got that ring. I could put the methane on the bottom and I could put the bromine over here. Same exact structure. All we did was rotate it. So same structure. Okay. So this one is going to be a phenol base. So we got our benzene like so. A phenol is when you put an OH on there. And then M means to remove. So here's ortho and here's meta. But also ortho meta is here too. So it doesn't matter which one you pick. And that's going to be chloro. So that sounds like chlorine. Okay. All right. So that's pretty much all the, the, the benzene, the aromatic naming can get way more complicated than this, but we are not going to go any farther with it. This is, this is all you've got to know. So practice doing those kind of problems and ignore the ones that are any harder than that. Um, it gets crazy. So, you know, the next thing is, is naming cyclic alkanes and alkenes. So essentially a cycle is exactly what it sounds like. So we looked at one of these in lab, but pretty much you just have everything connected, right? So the smallest cyclic uh, alkane that you can have is cyclopropane because you can't make a circle out of just two atoms, which would be C2, right? So cyclopropane is the smallest one. They are extremely reactive because this is a very sort of tense bond. It's a very shallow bond angle. So they don't like to stay this way. They have a tendency to come apart and react. And so cyclopropane is an alkane, but it doesn't follow the generic molecular formula of, um, oh, hang on, that one. That's, that's supposed to be a two. They don't follow the cheat sheet, in other words, is what I'm looking at, where it says um, CN H two N plus two. That's supposed to be what an alkane is here. So that would be C C three. And so two N plus two would be three times two is six plus two is eight, right? So the thing is though, in order to make an, a connection between these two carbons, they had basically what we did is we just take your standard propane and we have to remove a hydrogen from each end to make that bond. Right, so here's our propane. In order to turn this into a cycle, I have to t 
take off a hydrogen on each side and then connect them. Boop. Obviously, it's not a triangle, but that's the idea. So the cyclic alkanes ha don't have the plus two. We have to take away those two electrons to make this connection. So this counts as unsaturated because we don't have as much um, hydrogen as we ought to have, you know. But it's technically still an alkane because everything is single bonded. Okay, so that's weird. But the, the numbers kind of follow what you'd expect. So if there's four carbon in the cycloalkane, then it's, you know, C4, H8. And we call it cyclobutane. Cyclopentane would be five. Hexane would be six. And heptane would be cyclo, you know, cycloheptane would be seven. So it goes on like that. Um, but they all make little circles, right? Um, they're all single bonds here. You could have an alkene, though. It could be something like... that, right? So that's an alkene because we have a double bond. Um, okay, so here's a nice summary of, of all the functional groups, and you have a different summary that's on your handout, right? But these are all the types of chemicals that can be derived from our alkanes, our alkenes, or, al or our alkynes, right? So they're like the basic starting point, and then from there we change it all. We've seen some of this before. You've seen alcohols before. Alcohols always have a carbon thingy with an OH somewhere. Ethers are when you have an O in the middle with carbon on either side. Aldehydes we've seen a bit of, right? So they look like, you know, carbon double bonded to an O with an H. <clears throat> All right, ketones are just two carbons uh, surrounded by the carbonyl, right? So this is a nice little summary. It also has a handy guide for naming them. Okay, so if you're having a s bit of a struggle with that part, make sure that you, you've printed this and you're using it while you practice it. You don't have exactly that chart on your final exam, but you have one that's similar, so you should also get used to using that. Okay, so just take a second and read this awesome comic. Okay, I didn't draw this, obviously. I took it from the internet. But dysfunctional groups are hilarious, okay? Because they go from being awesome, doing some cool functionality, that's where the name comes from, to being like, you know, grumpy, <laughs> not doing their jobs, right? Um, so it's a, it's a cheesy chemistry joke, okay? Um, so we have a couple of main categories, okay? So phenyl groups are when we have a benzene ring that's attached to a bunch of hydrocarbon stuff. Carbonyls are that C double bond O that we've been talking about. And alkyl refers to like a, a CH3 group, a methyl group hanging off. Or an ethyl CH2, CH3, or a propyl CH2, CH2, CH3, so like that. Okay, and the reason we learn about them is because different functional groups do different things. Okay, so here's our summary. is a picture, right? So if you're a visual person, this is for you. Alkanes, all single bonds. Alkenes, double bond. Alkyne, triple bond. Benzene, which when it's hanging off a ring, uh, hanging off like a parent chain is called a phenyl. And when it's the only thing that's on there, the base of the word is going to be benzene. Amines are what you get when you have nitrogen with a hydrogen or a carbon. So H means hydrogen, of course. And R means carbon. Alcohols are OHs, ethers are just O with carbon on either side. So these lines, of course, refer to carbons, right? So we're going to have carbons hanging off of all these things. Alkyl halide means we've got a carbon connected to any of the group 17 atoms. A thiol, which is so smelly, that's what makes skunks smell terrible. But also, conversely, what, what makes people's hair curly, so not all bad. Uh, anyway, this is... Thiol. It's when you have a carbon attached to an SH group. Aldehydes, ketones, esters. So these are like a nice guide for you. The difference between an amine, which is just NH or N, uh, N connected to C, and an amide is that amides have the carbonyl and the NH group. Okay, so that's something to keep in mind. Okay, so a little bit about alcohols. Naming them is relatively straightforward. We just have to add OL to the end. So when you would write like methane for a one carbon alcohol, you just take off the E and put on the OL. So here, this is 
you know, two carbons. So ethane would be what we call it without the alcohol. And then when we put the alcohol in there, it becomes ethanol. This is the one that you drink. This is the one that gets you drunk, right? And it's in every alcoholic beverage. Um, it's the only one that's not a poison. Every other alcohol is poisonous. Don't drink them. Sometimes the formal name is ethanol, but sometimes we'll see it labeled as ethyl alcohol. It's just a common naming system. They're the same thing, right? So meth methanol might be called methyl alcohol. We want to find the parent chain with the longest chain, just like we did for alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. And we also need to say where the where the alcohol occurs. In ethanol, we don't need to. There's It, it can only occur on the first carbon anyway, because if we move over here, that becomes the first carbon. Um, but once we get to propane, we have to start uh, explaining, numbering where the OH group is. So here's an example. If we number from the right to the left in this problem, then the OH group would be at the one position. So that's that's good, rather than the four position. So as usual, we want to minimize the numbers. And this is a four carbon thing, so we're going to call it butane, but we take off the E and put an OL, so butanol. In this one, it's still a butanol, right? Because it's still got four, but now the, the, height, the OH group, the alcohol group occurs at the second carbon. Over here, it's, it's now a propane. The main chain, the biggest chain I can make is propane, right? And that becomes propane pan all. So we take the E off and put in OL. I want to say that it's one propanol because that's where the alcohol is. But then I also have to say it's two methyl. And I put a hyphen in between the letters and the numbers always. Okay. And then this one over here is also a propanol. We could have numbered it like one, two, three, or one, two, three, or whatever. One, two, three. It doesn't matter. You're going to get the same name. Right, and so this is three either way, so that's propanol. It occurs, that the alcohol occurs at the number two again. But now we have this methyl group hanging off the second carbon. Okay, so it's going to be two methyl, two propanol. Okay, this one's an alkene, so that's interesting. So we're going to make that carbon one, that'll be two, and that'll be three. So that's propene with an alcohol group on it. Take a second and see how you want to name that. Okay, so we this one's kind of strange because we have a, an alkene functionality and an OH group. The thing is that OH takes precedence, we say. So this one is going to be the ending. We're going to make the ending all. I still have to say where this is, right? Um, so you could even say like one all, right? At the second carbon, we have an alkene, which ends in E and E. And of course, the whole thing is going to be called propane, right? So these are the pieces. We have to put them in order. The, the precedence goes to the alcohol. The functional group matters more. So OL goes on the end. Ene has to go before that, and then prop before that. So it's going to be prop to ene one all for real that's the name isn't that weird but that's how we do it so the alcohol takes precedence it's more important than the ene because it has more reactivity is pretty much the reason for that <clears throat> whoa now we got a ring so that's a cyclo thing right cyclo uh let's see how many one two three four five six so cyclohexane oh no cyclohexene where the ene occurs at the third carbon, right? And I, like I said, the alcohol is more important, so we're going to put that on the end. Okay, so we have a one all, and we have a cyclohexene at the third carbon, so we got to plug that in there somewhere. So, cyclo, hex, three ene, one all. Wow, cool. The next one's fun too because we have two alcohols on it and we of course have to say where both of them are, right? So one of these is going to be carbon number one and the other one will be two. doesn't matter which you pick because it's symmetric. So, uh, And we have 
two alcohol groups. So when we have two of the same groups, we use that prefix di and then the ending, so diol. So this one would be a 1,2-diol, and of course it's it's two carbons, so eth ethane-diol. We actually do put an E in there just because we don't like ND, that sounds weird. So it's a 1,2-ethane-diol. There you go. And now in this particular case, you don't actually have to say 1,2 because there's nowhere else to put them. No, you know what? That's not true. It could be a it could be a one one. It could have both of them on the same place. So no, we should keep it. Never mind. I take that back. All right, last one. So that's a propane, right? Because it's three. As you might imagine, we have three different groups, so we're going to use a different prefix. We're not going to say die, right? We're going to say trial. Okay. So those are fun. <laughs> okay, so these all have common names, the ones that are weird. We, we, we do feel like this is weird, even though that's like technically how you might name it, right? So ethane 1,2-diol or 1,2-ethane-diol, same thing. So we also call this ethylene glycol. That's what is in your antifreeze. Glycerol is used to make soap. That's, you know, that's what glycerol is, okay? So carboxylic acids are the next functional group they all have a carbonyl in them and an oh so it's like if you took just like a ketone and an alcohol and smash them together that's what you get right so they look like this they might have an h attached to it or they might have another carbon or some kind of crazy chain whatever it is okay we've heard of these before acetic acid is one of these dealies right so this is the structure of acetic acid oh look here it is that's this right here that's vinegar, right? We've used it a billion times at this point. Okay, maybe not that much, but you get the idea. The formal name of acetic acid, this is a common name. It's just something you have to memorize that it means two carbons. The actual name of acetic acid is ethanoic because there's one, two carbons. So oic is how you know it's a carboxylic acid. And ethane is how you know how many carbons there are. The one with the carbonyl is always carbon number one, 100% of the time. So that makes numbering it a little bit easier. Okay. Now, esters are what you get when you take a carboxylic acid like this one. So here's our C double bond O, OH, and you connect it with an alcohol. So in this case, this is methanol, right? This is not lined up correctly. Hang on. 